This week, in episode 55 of the Whiskey and Kings podcast, we try two blended malt scotch whiskies from the independent bottler Douglas Lane, the Scallywag and the Rock Island. And we welcome their brand ambassador, Stuart Baxter, to guide us through these two regional malt releases. As always, you can find some more whiskey-based content, images, videos, etc. on all our social media platforms at Whiskey and Things Podcast on Instagram and at Whiskey and Things on Facebook and Twitter. And Nick, I don't know if you've seen this, but we have had 24 five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. 24 people cannot be wrong. So, if you're listening and you haven't given us a review, why not go and do that right now? You're listening to the Whiskey and Things Podcast with Dave Giles and Nick Kent. Welcome to episode 55 of Easter and Things. I'm Dave Giles. And I'm Nick Kent. Welcome to Easter Monday and stuff. (laughs) Um, Did you have a good one? Yeah, it was nice. You know, enjoying the weather and uh, some nice food and stuff like that. Um, Absolutely. Had Danny Gruff around for a bubble night. We sampled some of the some of the new whiskies I got on the shelf. Yeah, it's lovely. How was yours, man? Excellent. Just went for some long walks. I've just got in from. I've just looked on my step counter. It says fourteen kilometres of walk today. My glutes are roasting. Ooh, I don't want to know. <laughs> it was good though. It was nice good, good. getting out. Sun sun shining. It's a bit colder today than it was yesterday. Uh, but yeah, it was nice. Really nice. Nice to get out and about. Lovely jubbly. Well, should we talk about this week's guest? I think we should. I think we should, Nick. We're a fan of independent bottlers on this show, aren't we? Yeah, I would say it's become a big part of the show. Bear in mind, this time last year, I didn't even know what they were. Become one of our most exciting parts of our show, I think, in terms of our whiskey education. Oh, absolutely. And this week, we, uh, we welcome on a brand ambassador from another independent bottler, Douglas Lane. That's not his name. He's from Douglas Lane. His name's <laughs> Stuart Baxter. And uh, yeah, we chatted to him last week and yep. we had a wonderful time, didn't we? And he brought, yep. he sent us a couple of whiskies and he sent us some other swag as well after the interview. When when you hear this interview, you wonder why the hell was he rewarding you with swag after yeah, this I, interview? I didn't even pronounce it right at first, did I, Nick? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, no surprise there, but yes, I thought it was Douglas Lang. <laughs> Yeah, because there's a G at the end of it, right? It's spelled L-A-I-N-G. Lane, to me, is L-A-N-E. So it's one of those crazy Scottish pronunciations, isn't it? You just never know. You never know. You never know. But, but uh, he, he corrected us very gracefully. Very subtly. Yes, yes it was, uh, yeah. This wasn't our smoothest interview, but you'll hear. We'll talk about that afterwards, I think. But, uh, yes. He anyway. was great. He was he, great. Oh, yeah, he was, was fantastic. Just, just, just Completely you awful. <laughs> Yeah. Completely awful. <laughs> we, <laughs> 55 episodes in and we, we had a bit of a, bit of a howler, as you'll yeah. hear. But yeah, we, I, I, Nick, in fairness, Nick, I think listeners will agree. I think we rode it out fairly well. <laughs> we did style it out quite we, well. We, I think I think it wasn't, you know, carry on listening because it's well worth listening to because Stuart's fantastic. But oh, yeah. I think we, we definitely, uh, we did all right. We did, we all, did right. all right. Nothing a few sound effects can fix. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoy this little interview with Stuart Baxter. From Douglas Lane. So, welcome, Stuart Baxter, uh, the brand ambassador of Douglas Lang. So, Stuart, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, before we get on to, to Douglas Lang, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how did you end up working for a whiskey company? Hey, guys. Hey, Nicky, Dave. Yeah. Um, pleasure, I'm Stuart Baxter. I'm global ambassador for Douglas Lang. A very small family-owned company, but um, my background, I've always worked in hospitality, uh, flinging pints to pay my way through uni. Um, and from there, what turned out to be a kind of money maker and put me through uni turned into an absolute passion point. Um, working in bars, restaurants, um, hotels, I worked as a sommelier uh, and then fell deeply in love with whiskey um, as any stereotypical Scotsman. So yeah, <laughs> wine was a, was a big thing, absolutely adored it as I worked as a sommelier for maybe what, three, four months. And then as soon as I entered into the world of whiskey, I just fell madly in love with it and from there uh, I remember having a conversation with my dad saying he was like look I don't care what you do you, you know you're going to eventually have to do something he's like what, what do you enjoy doing I was like oh, you know, I love whiskey but that's not a real job can <laughs> money in whiskey and he was like yeah, of course you can uh, so from there I applied to a number of programs and I got into an ambassador program uh, sent me over to India for two years and then from there I uh, started the job with Douglas Ling 
Um, and now it's been just over just over a year now. Uh, tough year, but just over a year. So I have already mispronounced the company name. It's it's Douglas Lane, <laughs> don't worry, don't not worry. Douglas Lane. <laughs> I was going to overdub that in the intro, Dave. Oh, oh no, it's see? more fun. It's more, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I could pretty much get every single thing wrong when it comes to pronunciation. So it's it's just, oh, it's just don't another worry. one. I, I did my first tasting for the company and it was you know, big pressure. You know, brand, you know, new brands. We got six, six remarkable regional malls and a number of ESCs. I did my first tasting and said lying about eight or nine times during it. Um, and then Fred Ling, our chairman owner, who's second generation, uh, caught in the barn and went, Lane. I was like, okay, never, never <laughs> forgotten it or mispronounced it since that moment. I'm going to make a note of that. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> Underline that a couple of oh times. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my, well, you're still working for him, so it can't have been that bad. There you go. No, no, yeah. So tell us a bit about Douglas uh, Land, uh, Lane. So I'm, I'm just going to second guess myself every time. You've said it. It's so easy, <laughs> but I can't do it now. Just anyway, it tell us a bit about the company. <laughs> 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 Great start. Uh, yeah, so Douglas Lane, we're a family-run company, and we're fairly small as it goes from uh, from larger. So we're a family-run company, have been since 1948. So we're started by a guy called Fred Douglas Lane, hence the name. Uh, Fred Douglas Lane, who uh, founded in 1948, his son, Fred Lane Jr., uh, is our chairman owner. He's definitely taking a step back from the company. And then Caroline, who's our third generation, is our director of whiskey, who her and her husband, Chris Leggett, who is our CEO, is very much in the family. Uh, they're taking the reins of the business now. They arrived in 2013. But we've been blenders and bottlers up until November 2019, meaning you know we've created the brands that we're going to go on to talk about, Scallywag and Rock Island, Big mm-hmm. Pete. Um, and we've bottled single cask whiskeys as well. Um, but now in November 2019, we took over Strathern Distillery. Um, small, I mean, real small. You can hug the still small. Nice. Uh, we're doing a bunch of renovations too, which is great. But um, that's the first time in our, in that it was 71 years at that point, uh, that we became distillers, blenders and bottlers. So that was, you know, a really exciting time for me to come to the business and all of a sudden taking over distillery and we're building another one as well, which... I need to be very careful what I can talk about with it. But uh, yeah, really, really exciting time. Uh, we'll ask you after you've had a couple of shots later. What's going on with that? <laughs> Everyone always does. <laughs> That's really interesting then. So, so you're, you're, you're kind of finishing, completing the circle of, of the start of the journey of, you know, bottling and then, and then blending and, and now making your own, like completely from scratch. I love that. I love how that's, that's come to be together over, over time and staying in the family as well, yeah. uh, which, is, which is absolutely delightful. So with the, uh, the barrels, with your blendings, etc. when do you receive the spirit? Do you receive it as a new make and then put it in the barrels yourself? Or do you receive it after it's matured and then maybe do some finishing, etc.? I know it might vary from bottle to bottle. What's yeah. the uh, general way you guys no, do it? No, it's a good question. So we're, we're very proud of our wood policy. It wasn't something that we en masse wanted to do where we just take a cask and bottle it. Um, we wanted to have a level of control and craft behind that. So as you said earlier, we take new mix spirit from different distilleries. We work with 65 plus across Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we take the new wow. mix spirit and introduce it into the casks that we've deliberately chosen uh, for that specific new, new mix spirit. Um, you know, this is Cara, Chris and Fred that are taking control of this. And, you know, Fred's what, 50, you'll hate me saying this, 50 odd years in the whiskey industry. He's coming up to 50 years with Douglas Lane. So you think about all the bottlings and the awareness he has of, unique new mix spirits from different distilleries and how they work within a hogshead or a bourbon barrel or sherry, but um, it's it's an amazing process. And for me, that's very much the artistry. So no, we we control the new mix spirit into, into a cask that we've deliberately chosen. Right. And then from there, we take those casks and create the remarkable regional malts that we've got or you know, scallywag and just depends on the, the spec list and the flavor profile that we're trying to achieve for each of those bottlings. Very cool. Everything about uh, Douglas Lane is 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 really fun. Like the labels, uh, and apparently you even sell socks. Nick told me earlier. Yeah. Um, so is that the core of the company to to kind of bring some uh, brevity into the into the whiskey world as well, especially Scotch, which can be quite stuffy. Yeah, and I think we're definitely seeing this across the board. You know, you're seeing you know other companies doing this. What it is, it's, it's funny, silly labels that we produce. But you know, the great thing is, see when people mention, you know, I bought this bottle for my friend that's trying to get into whiskey and it's like, great. It's like, oh, you know, it was made a bit intense for them. It's like, yeah, well, you know, Timber Speechley, let's say is the cutest one with a wee mouse on it. It's yes. 0.8% non-chill filtered high, you know, natural colored whiskey. It's, it's serious liquid in the bottle as much as there's a, a lovely dog or a, a mouse on it. Um, and <laughs> so, yeah, it's just trying to, I said that, 
a brevity and the levity to it because it is or has been a quite stuffy world, the Scotch whiskey world. And then um, we're definitely seeing it over the last five, 10 years and, and now more so than ever, that it's becoming more accessible. Um, and just like lifting that veil, you know, that man behind the curtain concept um, and then opening up to the world, which is nice to see. So where can we find your stuff? I read you have emporiums. I'm a big fan of emporiums. I don't even know what an emporium is. <laughs> so we're actually in the middle. It's been a big project of mine since travel's been negated in the last year, obviously. So um, we've actually, we're revitalizing our emporium program, which is quite exciting. Um, so we've got emporiums all over the world currently and um, we're, we're revamping it and it's going to be available on our website You'll be able to find all of them and their, and their uh, specific websites and their locations which is great to see um, but regarding our products uh, douglasling.com we have our own website um, Master of Malt and then a number of specialists across the UK across Europe uh, that you can access them with Alright I just googled an emporium is a place of trade, especially a commercial centre, a retail outlet, or a hardware emporium, a pizza. It's basically a shop or a restaurant. It's, yeah. it's, a, fa- it's a fancy word for a restaurant or shop. Right, okay. Yeah. All right. What's the, why are you so excited about that? Because then, I've stumbled on emporiums <laughs> on my tour experiences, and they're always just like, sometimes there's like different retailers in one shop, and it's always like old stuff you wouldn't find. You might stumble on, you might stumble on a great Gibson Les Paul in there from like the 50s that the owner didn't know it was a fantastic, you know, worth a lot of money. I don't want to say junk shop, but there'd be like <laughs> artists in there and stuff and they'd have like all this other cool stuff. I just love an emporium and I think they sound cool too. Yeah, it's, uh, um, they're basically, you know, artisanal shops, a bit more unique, a bit more funky and uh, the way that we're framing it and why we're calling emporiums is basically just third-party retailers that stock our stuff that give you a more unique selection of our bottlings a uh, wider right. selection, more unique selection, and then um, we will run tastings and give them a, you know, access to a more bespoke Douglas Lane feeling and presence within the shop. Excellent. So uh, obviously you have a, a, a number of Douglas Lane whiskies. Do you have a particular favourite yourself? You're making me pick between my kids. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so we have a remarkable regional malt. So if we, you know, our, our single casks, we change constantly because in single cask, what's the great and wonderful thing about them and the terrible thing about them is you'll pick one and love it, but there's only 300 bottles of it in existence. So, mm. you know, I've got, I've got bottles on my shelf with just, you know, an inch left in it because I know it's gone. Yeah. Um, so if we talk about remarkable regional malts, which is, you know, our consistent brands, you know, you're going to have them as consistent offering. Um, we do it from each region of Scotland and... My favourite is Rock Island. Um, I try not to do some tasting to lead people down one way or another, but Rock Island's my favourite. It's, it's an island blended malt. As much as the islands aren't recognised as a whiskey making region, they definitely have a really unique flavour profile, which, which we're encompassing within it. Uh, we incorporate Isla, Jura, Aran and Orkney um, mm. distilleries within it. But I just love that maritime, smoky, coastal seaweed. There's that lemon citrus bourbon. There's a sweetness to it as well, but it's got this huge spectrum of flavour, which I adore. This, um, this has got Nick written all over it, this has, yeah. just from that description. He's going to love this. I know that already. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of my favourites. We did, uh, you know, we, we do our kind of, tra- let's say, traditional bottlings. But outside of that, we do weird and wonderful stuff. I've got with my left shoulder, if you guys can see it, a Rock Island sherry cask. It's I did see cherry. that. Yeah. Um, we did, uh, we do our Epicurean Wood Series. Epicureans are lowland. It's our most versatile. Um, we did a dessert wine cask last year. It was a reef salt cask. It's just... Those two are my two favourite liquids we bought over last year, and they're just stunning. Yeah. So, so how does that work then? So you've obviously got the core range of Rock Island. Do they then just take whatever that, that final blend and stick it in a cask of sherry, sherry cask just to finish it for a certain amount of time? Is that how that works? Well, for example, the sherry cask, that was exclusively aged sherry. So it's taking that, you know, that fundamental spec list of malts or new make spirit flavour profiles. So, you know, for example, Rock Island, we're taking from the islands, more coastal, salty, maritime in some cases, but obviously we're trying to represent Jura and Aaron as well, which are more honeyed sweet, um, yeah. arguably. Um, so no, we're taking that kind of spec list and then introducing it to Sherry Cast exclusively and then bottling it. Um, so it's, it's just, what I love about it, it's like a mad scientist, artist's world where no computer can do these things. You, know, you can't pass liquid through a computer and say that's a great Rock Island Sherry edition or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's only human beings that will ever be able to do this. And that's what makes it for me, so wonderful is uh, it is the most complicated spirit in the world, but you've got this spectrum of flavour with it from, you know, very basic ingredients. 
Whiskey Bots roll out. Shall we get on to doing a bit of a tasting of these of these two whiskies that we've got in front of us? Yeah. Which one would you like yeah. to start with, Stuart? I think we should start with the Scallywag. I'm jumping in here. Just because Stuart has, has, has spoke about the Rock Island, I kind of want to save that. I'm going to come uh, back to that. Yeah, just because yeah. I'm excited well, about it. So, this week's whiskey, we have, in fact, two. <laughs> <laughs> two. Douglas Lane, Scallywag. Let's start off with that one. 46% yeah. ABV. First of all, um, who's this little chap on the uh, on the bottle? We have a little dog um, on the label. You know, as much as people think this is just a random dog, it's not. If you'll see on the label closely, it's missing a tooth. So he is. Poor guy. This is Binks. So Binks was uh, one in a long line of fox terriers in the Douglas Lane family. And uh, Binks was missing a tooth and has now been immortalised in the bottle. Uh, sadly passed away um, just before this bottling was done. Um, but has now, as I said, been immortalised in the bottle. Um, right. And this was the second remarkable regional we did. We first started with Big Pete. We had no intention of doing a range of regional malts. Um, but the artist, I think they were doing a, at the time a Big Pete limited edition. The artist was in sketching and started sketching Binks, who sat next to Fred. And they said, we need to get this on a label. We need to do something with this. And then all of a sudden, we decided to do a space side blended malt. And then from there, it just snowballed, and we decided to do all the regions. Wow. I do love that about all these, the, yeah. the regional range. I'm not going to lie. I did have some Nick special time with these earlier on, where I have a little taste beforehand. <laughs> and uh, yeah, get the vibe from those regions. But uh, so, so did Binks also wear a monocle, or was that artistic <laughs> license? All, every day. Every day. Um, I love that. Wonderful collection as well. And um, Fred inherited it, so it's, it's nice to see him keeping the tradition. So who's Cooper? Is Cooper moving in on uh, Binks' territory? Cooper has moved in. I don't think <laughs> Binks can say much about it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Cooper is the current uh, Fox Terrier in the league uh. family. Excellent. Well, that's the label. See, this is the yeah. thing about your whiskies. There's stories everywhere. We haven't even, we haven't even looked at the liquid yet, but we're talking about the story behind it, which is delightful. So am I right in saying, uh, from what you just said, this is a Speyside blend? Yeah, so this is a, it's a, all of the remarkable results are blended malts. So that means there's no grain whiskey included in this. So it's um, you know one of the five categories of Scotch whiskey. So this comes from two or more single malt distilleries. So within every batch of Scallywag, we include Macallan, Mortlach and Glenrothes uh, within every single one. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's a blended malt, not a blended scotch where you would find, you know, famous grouse, bells, white mackay. And um, this is, you know, malt flavor profile, that intense and characterful malt that we all kind of desire. And um, the great thing is you're just taking it from single cast, single malts from some of your favorite distilleries. You're kind of having that best of all worlds situation. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it's 46% ABV. Uh, and I believe non-chill filtered, which is always lovely. Yeah. Uh, any colouring, or is it is is um, is that just natural from the from That's the blend? Natural colour. And um, when you pour, when you see them all next to one another, all five or all six, now that we have the goldens, you'll see that this is the darkest of all, and uh, it is natural colour. But the reason that it's so dark is this is seventy five percent oloroso sherry, roughly, right, and roughly twenty five percent bourbon cask. So the idea behind the Marker Bridge malts is to give you the ultimate distillation of each region. And what we mean by that is that traditional profile that we associate with each region. You know, the amount of times when I was younger and I was in a bar and someone would say, oh, that's a classic Isla or that's a classic space site. But, you know, now you get, you know, Belvini did Peak Week, stunning whiskey, not a traditional space site flavor profile, stunning, stunning whiskey. And then you've yeah. got you know, unpeated islets. They're not necessarily traditional profiles, but still wonderful whiskey. So it's yeah. giving people that anchor point and understanding um, of each region profile so that's why we've done that 75 percent sherry 25 percent bourbon to be you know representative of that classic space side sherry fruity and spice profile that um that we felt that we've achieved with scallywag so as you said it's 46 percent natural color non-chill filtered the only thing that's been done to this liquid is it's been controlled down to that 46 percent yeah other than that it's as natural as it gets as we like to say you know it's as close to drinking from the the vat or the cask as possible Tell you what, this smells delightful. It does, doesn't it? Absolutely mm. amazing. Get me a scented candle with this one, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, add, it, add it to the list, please, of uh, scented candles I, I want. I think that's where this podcast is going. We're just going to go into the business of whiskey scented <laughs> candles. Whiskey says, yeah. Because yeah. that been a running theme for all of you. Like, oh, it's not, yeah. not all, no, just when it, there's been a few, maybe four right. or five, that have really blown me away on the nose. I, I just would love it. Would love it as a candle. It's now a running thing. If I really like the smell, I want it as a candle. So that's a good thing. No, I love um, that. 
But like, if you look at the legs as well, it's years on it. It's a really viscous whiskey, even before you can uh, you take oh, it. it is. Oh, yeah. the, the one thing I always do with them um, tasting. You can tell he's a you can tell he's a wine man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it's I, I use this in a tasting as well. A lot of people ask me about the use of water in tastings, and um, you know, my, the tastings I do, especially with these, work for people who are whiskey geeks and people who are complete novices. Um, but Scallywag's the always one I use to kind of show how much water impacts whiskey. Because on the nose for me, there's that slight orange peel, there's that nutmeg, cinnamon, there's dried Christmas cake, you know, the dried ingredients for Christmas cake in a bowl. Mm. And then when you add a touch of water and just cover it for a good 15 seconds, the humidity builds up because you're reacting with that higher strength alcohol, which carries flavor. Uh, the conjures pop off and all of a sudden you've got that warm out the oven Christmas cake after adding a little bit of water for me. But um, do experience it on your palate first and you'll see that burst open for, for you. I, I just can't get enough of this smell. It's amazing. All those things you just said as well. It, it's it's so. It really does remind me of of mum making a Christmas cake, uh, yeah. which you know. And I know that's a common a common one that comes up with uh, with sherry cask space sides. But it it's a great smell and it's a great flavour profile. So um, for me, there's like milk chocolate in as well. You know, not I mean. I've had people say dark chocolate, and again, whiskey subjective. Some people are more sensitive to certain smells than others. For me, it's milk chocolate. Yeah, you know those milka bars that you can get from uh, from what is that Swiss or Austrian chocolate? So it's yeah, Al- yeah. Alpine chocolate, whatever that is. It's definitely there's definitely some of that in there, which is definitely a milk chocolate. Yeah, a vanilla on the nose. Fine, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Chocolate on the palate hits me straight away. Dark chocolate for me. It's the reason we keep higher strength alcohol. You know, we do we do cash strength. We did a Scallywag Twelve, which was 100 percent sherry cash strength. I think a 53.6. But the reason we maintain higher strength is because alcohol carries flavour. Yeah, and um, you know that's it's the primary reason that we do it. And the, the happy bonus is that you know non-chill filtered whiskies. You guys would have had whiskies that you chill down and they become cloudy. Mm. You know the happy bonus is when you maintain a higher level of strength that that doesn't happen um, yeah. unless you freeze it all the way down. Then yeah, it definitely will. But you know the the average room temperature water it doesn't, which is quite good. Yeah, this is this is really nice. This is a very in, enjoyable drinking experience as well. Nick was saying dark chocolate. I don't think I'm. Maybe I'm getting that. The great thing is you'll never be wrong. Um, you'll never yeah. be wrong with whiskey tasting. If you experience it, no one else can tell you that you don't. Spicy. Yeah, yeah for me, it was the, the big chocolate notes for me as well. There's like a touch of aniseed in it, I think, at the back. And it's when I exhale, you know that, you know, no aisle of whiskey is complete without the, the exhale and finish. It's just it's a retrohaling. For mm. me, it's reminding me of a smell of waking up and my parents have had a party the night before or some drinks with some friends and the coffee machine's going and i'm not a coffee drinker but that smell mixed within some alcohol fumes as well that are just <laughs> floating around it's spoiled it's been spilled on the floor um, yeah. i always loved that smell that waking up you know, as a kid waking up i know mum and dad had, had a good time the night before the combination of the coffee and the fumes of the alcohol and there's an element of that which i guess blends into a dark chocolate kind of note as well that you're picking up of that kind of coffee cocoa vibe mm. yeah god this is this is really drinkable there's so much flavor to it that's yeah gorgeous yeah i think that's and you know that's the thing we were talking about earlier is that you know it's serious whiskey as much as it's you know funny dog it's binks on the front of it missing a tooth um yeah it's it's bloody good liquid inside yeah as you said, you have a couple of other editions of this as well. Um, this is the core one, I'm guessing. You have a 12-year, which you mentioned. You have a winter edition and a chocolate edition. What's the deal with those two? Yeah, so we've, we've recently introduced our age range, which is um, as an age version of all of the remarkable results. This is what we're drinking is the core non-age statement. So average age on this is about eight years old. Um, again, average age. But we introduce our wild and wonderful limited editions. We do an Easter edition most years. Uh, chocolate edition and you'd be very careful what I can talk about what I can't talk about um, <laughs> we'll do a chocolate edition where we kind of ramp up the sherry and what we are looking for is single casks that have that milk chocolate cocoa and um, slight bitterness maybe that you kind of you know a lot of people are desiring in, in sherry cask and we're just kind of marrying them together and creating a, a balanced whiskey but allowing those chocolate ones to really come forward in it um, and the good thing is that we've got quite a decent selection of cast to choose from. So we, we pick them as, as liberally as we can and include it. Um, I think Fred gets a bit carried away sometimes because it still has to be a limited edition. So we can keep yeah. picking them. And it still has to be X amount of bottles that we're producing from it. How many bottles on average do you do for your limited editions? That might vary, but... Oh, it depends. For example, we did a big Easter recently. Uh, it was 400 bottles. Um, oh, wow. But it really depends. We did a... 
Our Terminal 2018 was like our, probably one of the larger ones, which was about 4,500 roughly. Um, you know, our batches, we do a very small batch. I mean, all of the Rocket Bridge malts, what we were drinking just now, it's 9,000 bottles per batch. I mean, mm. for larger companies, that is a limited edition. Yeah. Um, for us, that's our, our run. That's our batch. And uh, moving on to the next one. Yeah. So how much is how much is this going to set me back? Because this is a delightful drop, and I'm I'm thinking in my head, this is a sixty quid bottle of whiskey. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> it's uh, about forty five pounds. Oh, fantastic! Uh, depending on oh. retail, but yeah. Funny enough, I was reading. Um, I've got Greg Dillon, another independent bottler from Great Drams. Great job, Greg. This is in his book. Um, of one of his favourite, well, whiskies of 2015, really. And one quote was, almost too good to be true price is uh, in there. So, you know, a big old, big old, all the paragraphs in that for it. Is that about the scallywag he said that? Uh, this is about the rock oyster. I got the wrong one. But yeah. I know that's all more or less the same price as well. That's <laughs> How much is the rock island? Um, roughly the same price, if not slightly cheaper. I think we're in yeah. 42. I'll put that in later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, 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 just cut and paste that, Nick. That'd be fine. <laughs> Be fine. So I'm off in another place here. <laughs> it's all right. Um, it's about 45 quid. That is a really great price for this because this is a special whiskey. And especially as you said, what you said, 9,000 bottles of this gets made as a batch. Roughly, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah roughly just, that. depends on, on how much, but yeah, roughly that. So it's also quite exclusive in that sense as well, isn't it? You know, that's that's a, a nice amount for, I, I would call that an exclusive whiskey in the market, uh, with a great label, really great flavour profile. The three um, distilleries that you mentioned, Mortlach, McAllen and Glen, Glen Rothers, are really well-known brands, and you've inc- incorporated them. So that's why I was surprised, that's why I was expecting it to be up in the £60 mark. Mm. I'm thoroughly impressed and surprised, very pleased by that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, Good job. Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, you're a good job. It's like, thanks. A bit of a self. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well done, Stuart. You should be very proud of yourself. Probably. Yeah. Uh, you, you can tell your dad that you did a great job when you went Probably into the whiskey industry. Uh, he'll, he'll love that. He will love that. No, it's, uh, it's good. You know, I'm, I use a lot of these in cocktails as well because it's the strength is really important. You know, it carries flavor. So when you're stirring down, for example, like Scallywag, I make a Manhattan with it. Um, I think it stands really well. It stands out in a Manhattan. Um, but when you just stir it down, you're still maintaining a level of alcohol in it. You know, yeah. you're not dropping it from 40 below. You're dropping from 46 down to arguably around 40. So you're still maintaining that alcohol strength that carries mm. flavor and um, softening the blow of it at the same time, which I think works really well. But well, now, now I know I've got to try that as well. well for, fortunately, I saved some. I'll definitely be doing that. Uh, uh, Scallywag Manhattan, which just sounds delightful. Listening to the Whiskey and Things podcast. So, so the uh, the Rock Island is a li- you know it's forty six point eight percent, tiny little bit more than the Scallywag, and this is a, a, as you said earlier a collection of whiskies from the different islands: Isla, Aran, Duran, Orkney. I think you said. Yep. And as you, and this is one of your favourites. It's a, you mentioned seaweed and or the sea and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a lot lighter on the eye than the Scallywag. This is a. Um, this is a well hydrated piss. Um, it's <laughs> color wise w- would be, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I-, I can't think of anything else that's that colored liquid wise. White wine might do it. That's oh yeah, that would make sense. That yeah, would make a more, lot more uh, that's sense. More classy way of saying it, I think. But, uh... Of course, of course. Scrap <laughs> that. We'll go again. So uh, on the eyes, this is a white wine uh, <laughs> color. We're so professional. We are yeah, so professional. It's un- unbelievable yeah. professionalism here. And I'm excited by this because you've said that it's your favourite. Is it someone else's favourite as well, Nick? You know what? You two might be surprised to hear that it's actually a favourite of Greg Dillon. <laughs> no uh, way. I know. Yeah. You know from Greg Drams. <laughs> Get out of town. Friend of the show, who we've had on a couple of times. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually in his book. Here, uh, a little quote here. It says, almost too good to be true price. One of his favourite whiskies of uh, 2015. Punchy yet discerning nose and palate and it's sensibly priced so uh, yes in- interesting there there you go um, I, I would say on the nose Nick this is quite subtle it's a, there's a salty element to it you definitely get that sea that freshness and the sea it's- let me put this image in your mind this is what I go earlier on salt and vinegar crisps by the <gasps> sea oh yes nice with a touch of smoke you're getting smoke on the nose am I getting a smoke? tiny bit but yeah salt and vinegar crisps 
Very comforting. That is, that's so bang on. It's amazing you've just said that. Or chips by the sea. Yeah, the fancy ones as well. The the um yeah uh, the the kettle crisps ones. They're my favourite. That's <laughs> what this. Yeah. No, as you're saying, to the colour, it says bourbon cask. It's mostly bourbon cask aged, and again, right. natural colour, so no caramel colouring added. Um, the great thing is you. Uh, a few people in the, the, the industry the company, sorry, that are massive whiskey fans, but going into the sample room and being able to look at a bottle and cover the label and guess it, where's it from? How old is it? Is it a first fill, second fill, third fill bourbon? Is it a refill sherry, but is it a hogshead? Is it a PX sherry? Is it a grain? Is it a malt? You know, being able to use the limited knowledge that I've picked up uh, and guess at the liquid inside a bottle as opposed to, oh, there's caramel coloring in it. It could be from anywhere. Right. Yeah. Um, which is just, I think it's, it's great. And it's a, it's a great exercise for me to do, but that's what you're seeing there is again, average seven, eight years old on okay. the rock Island core, uh, exclusive Asian bourbon, hence the light color. And, um, but the great thing is, you know, we were very guilty with eating with our eyes or drinking with our eyes. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think we need to kind of get over it with whiskey because you look at the color of that and you assume it's going to be thin. It's going to be, not that intense of flavor. You, yeah, you're going to get those salty brown notes, but when you take this on the palate, all of a sudden you're getting like lemon meringue pie, vanilla cream, which you're not getting on the nose because it's not burst open just yet. Um, but the density in this, I think, is quite surprising. Do you know that's so true about lighter whiskies? I think people it would put people off if they didn't know yeah. better, which is certainly something that we've learned this this year. I don't take I don't take the eyes in terms of what it's going to taste like. I don't take it seriously at all, whether, or the quality. But you just pointed out something that, that is obvious, but I hadn't thought of, which is actually to the trained eye, you can pick out what casks they've been in. And that fa that's fascinating. I'd not yeah. thought about that actually being a thing, when clearly it must be. Um, so that's a, that's a new bit of knowledge I've just got. So thanks for that. Not at all. All right. So I, I'm excited to try this now. Oh, you've built it up so much. Pressure's on. Yeah. Well, Cheers. 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 I've, I've tried this multiple times, but pay attention to the build. I think for me, immediately salty in the palate, immediately. And then in the corners of your mouth, that kind of sweetness grows. But then from the back, there's the peat smoke, that delicate isle of peat smoke that was, as you were saying, was slightly in the nose, but it really comes forward on the palate for me. Absolutely. Oh, that's lovely. And, that, and that's the reason it's my favourite is the nose. For me anyway, and every time I nose it and taste it, I do genuinely love it, is the nose is very deceptive as to what then comes in the palate. And again, that's that, you know, adding a little bit of water to it on the nose will release those flavours because that's the alcohol and water reacting. But what's effectively happening is your saliva and alcohol reacting and that's what makes it burst open in your palate. So from the nose to the palate, for me, is the continuity continues, but just bursts open. It's yeah. like popping a bubble. Um, it's great. This is a long finish, but it, it, it keeps giving in a good way. Yeah. Sometimes, I find sometimes with PT whiskies that the long finish can get ashy or nasty, but I'm not getting that that with it with this. And maybe some people like ash, but but uh, um, for me that that can sometimes be a bit too much. <coughs> that kind of coating on the tongue. Yeah. yeah whereas this this isn't isn't that at all. This is um, for for those people who don't like peaty whiskies. I would say this is a definite. It's a good introduction. Intr yeah, it, mm. absolutely. Or for those who haven't tried PT whiskies and are scared by them, then then this is definitely a good intro because it's not over the top peat. It's a nice, it's a nice level of peat where you get that flavour profile of the seaside, as you, yeah. as we've mentioned. And that, that's the idea behind it. Is it wasn't to give uh, an intense peat characteristic because at the end of the, day, the islands aren't all uh, an intense peat characteristic. You know, you've got Jura, Aran, and you've got Tobermory. <laughs> Um, obviously you've got the cheek as well from the exact same distillery but you know you've got drastically different flavour profiles across so Rock Island is the hardest for us to get right uh, on the first, second, third try so you know our, our CEO always talks about this the cost is the most in Ubers because we get a little 10 scale <laughs> sample that you guys have put it in the back of an Uber buckle it seatbelt and then we take it from the vatting site to the office and, and it'll keep going back and forth until we get it right you know we get the sample right for ready for bottling so uh this guy costs us the most in a in our, in our Uber <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So, so let, let's talk about the label as well. It's another great label. It's um, so it's got oh, it's on the label it says Jura Isla Aaron Orkney. So I didn't even have to try and recall what you said earlier. It was right there in front of me. Yeah, I love this label. So it's got a I don't know oyster with a pearl in it. Is that is that the correct? Uh, it's a rock oyster. Um, rock oyster. 
Yeah, so Nick, you pulled a, a great chance, Greg, which had Rock Oyster, our old branding. It's now Rock Island. It's the exact same liquid. We uh, we changed it because ah, okay, I didn't know oysters are a bit polarized. Yeah, I was too busy looking at the picture. I didn't even notice the name. Yeah, yeah. So, right. um, we changed it because oysters are a little bit polarizing. When I start talking about like, salty and briny and seaweed, right, a lot of people just assume that that's what it's going to taste like. And, and you know, as you can see, it's not. So Rock Island is more friendly. Um, it's a bit more, you know, accessible. Let's say as a name. Yeah, but you see the branding yeah. work. I didn't even notice. I was just looking at the yeah. whole thing as a as a package and the picture and everything else. The the color combo on it is one of my favorite labels that we do. Yeah, gold. I agree. And, it's not like a royal blue. It's like a like faded gray blue. I think it's really really lovely. It is a gray blue faded ultramarine type thing. Oh, yeah, very nice. It's got a real vintage vibe to it as well, isn't it? Looks like it belongs in an emporium. That's what <laughs> it looks like. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like it's to me it's got an american feel to the label um i see this and i see long island well, maybe because it has an island in the title but i can see like going to the county fair in new york in upstate new york or whatever and that kind of thing and, and that the kind of posters that they would have yeah uh for, for those kind of events no this reminds me of as well you know like you know those kind of customized gig posters which you see all over the place. But in America, you get a lot more of them where there's a special gig and there'll be a special limited edition poster print gig poster. Litho. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what these labels remind me of. They're fantastic. And the closer you look, the more detail you see. I love that as well. Yeah, they'd be good posters, wouldn't they? They would be. be great posters. Um, yeah, you could have that up on your wall uh, as, as a piece of art. We've got a couple of uh, Rock Island courses, like, you know, a, a brunch one and, and things like that. So I can send you guys a couple of them if you, if you fancy them. Fantastic. Ooh, you know what? I've got a nice spot right here. Do, do you know, know what else? Really nice ha, do you know how else, else this would work? And this is my, my merchandise brain coming together here. Do you know those old fashioned uh, tin kind of things that you put up on the wall? You used to see in the old shops, the, the metallic tins that had like, the embossed logos on yeah one of them with that yeah. logo on would Day be amazing yeah. yes nick exactly that kind of thing exactly oh, it's gonna be great for the podcast but it's gonna oh, make a great I love video it. Yeah. yeah this kind of thing yeah they're great yeah so also I, I imagine do you have the same special editions with this as you did with the other one do all the core range have their own special editions um, you said earlier that you're doing a uh, an easter edition of the of the big peak so i'm assuming that this has similar things right yeah, so for example, we did the, the Rock Island Sherry. It was a massive hit. Um, oh, wow. I, that's my fifth bottle. Oh, yeah, of course. The, the, the one on the stash shelf. shelf. Yeah, I've, I, that's my fifth bottle I think I bought from the staff shop. I just fell in love with it. It's just a Willy Wonka dram of Island's flavour profile in Sherry. Like, it just, you know, almost shouldn't work together, but it does so beautifully. Yeah. Um, so we've done our Rock Island Sherry. We've got a uh, Rock Island Can't Say uh, coming out this year. <laughs> That's a catchy title. I'll tell you it. what, Ooh. let's get that on a poster. Rock Island can't say. Can't Coming say. soon. Um, so in July, we have a, a special edition Rock Island, which I'm really excited for. It was announced at our, uh, you know, we do an annual team uh, meeting at the beginning of the year, kind of plans for the year, and it was announced then, and I'm really excited for it. Um, very excited. You'll see that coming. Um, but we did, a, we did a cask strength version, which I fell in love with. It was actually, it was original branding, Rock Oyster cask strength, and I think... Um, I think there's an idea to bring that back, which I'm really excited for. I, nice. uh, I had bought one and from the staff shop because we're you know, depleting stocks and uh, gave it to my dad. And I was like, right, once the lockdown's over, me and you can drink this. Uh, yes. Three months later, I was like, that rock, that rock oyster cash strength was great. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> he was like, oh, oh, we were meant to drink that together, weren't we? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's gone. Oops. And then, uh, we, uh, our, our import in Germany, uh, Arna, very good, you know, BSC, they're lovely guys, but Arna's become a good friend of mine. And he said, um, you know, we've got a few bottles of this, this Rock Oyster Cash Strength and we can't, can't shift it. I went, look, send me a bottle, I'll do a video, a tasting video, and then, um, yeah, no problem. He went, you sure? Yeah, 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 just send me a bottle. Uh, so I've now got a bottle with about that much left in it, uh, just nursing it, and my dad's not going to see it. He's never going to see it. <laughs> never. <laughs> Genius. This is a special whiskey. I think this is everything I want from um, from a lightly peated whiskey. I think this, as I said earlier, I think this is right up Nick's street. I think Nick is it loving is this. Street. I'm yeah. loving this. The, I don't know if you picked it up, but like for me, there's a smoked mezcal note. Um, so I, we use this, our, one of our main services is a Bloody Joseph, which is just a Scotch whiskey, Bloody Mary. 
Um, but uh, a margarita, I, I promise you, if you make it's a classic margarita recipe with this in it, it works beautifully. Um, I was so skeptical first time I got it mentioned to me as you know the brand ambassador. I'm going to have to make these in a bar, and I was like, oh, okay, Scotch whiskey margarita doesn't sound better than a tequila. It works wonders. If you get a chance to try it, it's very very surprising. Rock Island margarita also has a really great ring to it, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Uh, okay, that's another one. I, again, I'm glad I got a, I got. A, I only had half of my uh, my samples, so I can I can do that. I think I'm gonna gonna have a go. Whoops. Nick's uh, um, Nick's on board. Yeah, Amateur yeah, yeah. hour, Nick. Always leave half for a, for a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> I know. My bad. My bad. I tell you what. Um, you said this was forty six quid. It's possible. Uh, forty two to forty five pounds. It's depending where you're going for. It's fantastic for the that value, is, isn't it's it? It's good value. A- again, it's 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 one of those ones where. If if you had told if you'd done a blind tasting and told me that was a, that was over a hundred quid, I wouldn't I wouldn't have lied. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have blinked. I would have been like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's funny yeah. we uh, we talk quite liberally about the, the distilleries that go into the other. You know, we talk about Mark McCallum, Mortlach, and Glen Rothfuss and Rock Island. We we, we don't um, for for a number of reasons, but we kind of allude to it. So Isla, we, we do incorporate Isla, which obviously there's a number. It could be any, but Jura, um, you can probably have a. <laughs> Easy guess at that one. Aaron is the only one that's old enough and big enough to supply us. And uh, Orkney, I can't remember the last time that Scapa produced a salty whiskey. So you can also have a, a good guess. <laughs> Orkney. Yeah. I found out recently that um, it's to do with the expense, isn't it? They charge you extra if you want to include the, the, the name of the distillery within the marketing. And yeah, Isla in yeah. particular is really expensive to, to get. Yeah, you you can. We've got um, you know, the number of deals that we have, which is genuinely done on Fred and his dad and a handshake and a smile, is outrageous. <laughs> but um, genuinely, it's <laughs> there's a number. Um, so we have a, a number of great relationships with distilleries we worked for for decades now. Um, but yeah, you're completely right. But then a lot of distilleries will sell their new mix spirit under a pseudonym. Um, oh, okay. A subsidiary name. Um, I can't think of any at the top of my head, but if you Google it, you'll be able to find them um, and find their names. But you'll see some single cast bottlings or even if they utilize it under weird distillery names. And you're like, well, I've never, never heard of that. And you Google it and you find out it's a subsidiary of a, a more popular distillery <laughs> name. And it allows them to sell their, their spirit without allowing their name to be used within, you know, labeling or, or whatever. That's, that's that is certainly interesting. Well, well, thank you so much for joining us and talking us through the the, the company and these whiskies. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming you're hoping to get out to all the whiskey events if they open up this year uh, and get yeah. back out and, and doing the job properly, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, July Southport is uh, Southport Whiskey Club. We're going to be doing a festival with them, and that's I think the first one where I have minimal travel, and then from there we're looking at France and Belgium in September, October. So. Wow. Fingers crossed. Yeah, well, I wish you all the best with that. And uh, and, and hopefully we'll catch you at an event sometime soon and we'll be able to share a dram with you in the flesh as well. Please, yeah, absolutely. Why they ever let two Englishmen have a whiskey podcast, I'll never know. Well, there we go. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was a bit inebriated because he sent us two 100ml bottles and I'd had half of two of them in the morning I'm in Nick's special time cheers <laughs> and then uh, not, not in the morning in the afternoon and then finished yeah, yeah, yeah. off the other ones in the tasting and I, you know, I obviously didn't have enough bread Dave my, my, my <laughs> to suck my, it up <laughs> no so apologies for that listeners and uh, apologies Stuart I didn't that. have any excuse <laughs> <laughs> I just before the interview I'd been outside it was that that really sunny day and I'd been outside and I was reading a book against a tree so maybe I was just high on life and just completely distracted and then, high on life yeah is yeah. that where you got your your visual note looks like a well hydrated piss yes <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can see the full uncut version of that interview in all its glory over on our Patreon account. You lucky Patreon subscribers this week, that's for sure. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash whiskey and things. But a big thanks to Stuart for coming on, uh, being absolutely wonderful with us despite our own uh, flaws. And uh, also said after the interview, despite, maybe it's because he felt sorry for us, but he did he send did, us yeah. both a poster, a glass and a pin badge. So yeah. what what a lovely, lovely man. Yes, um, indeed. And great whiskies and wonderful value for money as well. I mean, I know we said it a few times in the show, in the interview, but uh, 
definitely worth checking out, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, this rock oyster, I might have to, you know... Yeah, I mean, I, I preferred the, I preferred the scallywag, but right. but then but then I I am less of a peat head than you, and not that it's too too peaty, but um, I like that one too. Yeah, when we went back to the scallywag on the nose, that caramel, oh, uh, it was it was so uh, so nice. Uh, I feel a connection uh, with the scallywag as well because the dog's missing a tooth. Um, <laughs> Very much like me, and for listeners who don't know, I actually have a I have a Grim Reaper tattoo on my arm um, with a very nice skull, and I actually have the, t- the same teeth. teeth. Yeah, well, no, I have a couple of teeth missing on the skull, which are the same teeth that I'm missing in real life, everyone. So I feel like if I ever have a label with my face on it, it would have the missing teeth. Anyway. I'll tell you what we'll do, Nick, is a, as a Patreon extra over the next couple of weeks, we're going to record the story of uh, how Nick lost his teeth. Yes. Right before we started filming the YouTube show in 2014. Yeah, exactly. It's a very it's a very funny story. So we'll record that as a Patreon extra. Yeah, hilarious. Uh, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Anyway, um, you can find out more about <laughs> Douglas Lane over on www.douglaslane.com. Um, and they are at D Lane Whiskey. That's Lane with a G and Whiskey with no E on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Stuart is at Douglas Lane Baxter on Instagram. Yeah, and we'd be putting all the links to those pages in our description as well. Yeah, L-A-I-N-G. Hope you enjoyed that. Professional podcast (laughs) platform. (laughs) The thing is, Nick, the thing is, in fairness, right, you're right, we've done 55 weeks of this, and we've not had, I don't think we've had a bad interview yet where you and I, at least one of us hasn't been on form. That one was the first time we where weren't but, off we weren't, form. it's not horrendous, but it just Spirit. wasn't, we, yeah, we weren't there. We weren't at the table in terms of talking. Uh, well, I don't know. We were, we were, we were all right. We weren't too bad. There's a couple of little slip ups here when, and there. When, but when you do a weekly thing, every now and then you're going to have one that just runs past you, just Bumpy goes, road. just a bump. But at least Stuart was great and carried us. Thank yeah. goodness for Stuart. Yes. He may not have pronounced it right in his first week, but uh, <laughs> he's earned his, his money now. Absolutely. Whiskey! All right, Nick, let's, uh, let's pull, pull back the professionalism on this section of the show. Do you know, I nearly made another word up there. I nearly said, let's pull back the professionality uh, just to <laughs> really uh, enhance our professionality. Um, so uh, I think it's time for us to, to do what we do best. Cue the drums. We get excited about... Booms rounds. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I mean... I- it's everyone's favourite part of the show is you yeah, and I getting I think excited. Just skip forward to this point. To, um, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. such a great, uh, great piece of music you composed there as well, Nick. I mean, I, I am so excited every time I hear it. Isn't it some of my finest work? You know, I, I mean, <laughs> if people don't know. We, we do. We compose all the stings for this show. It's either yeah. Dave's music or that he's released, or there's demos which I've never released because you know I don't never get around to releasing music apparently. Um, but Booze Round was specifically specifically made for this yeah, show. It's bespoke. Whereas mate. everything else is just yeah, it's bespoke. <laughs> it's, pheno- it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I'm. A, you know, I'm available for, to hire everyone. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Anyway, we need to, we need to get you on Fiverr. Oh, yeah. that's a good question. That's a good question. Yes, we got on with it. <laughs> so l- l- last week, I tentatively mentioned uh, that, that we'd seen some posts about distilleries winning awards from the World Whiskey Awards, and we said we didn't really know what they were or how it worked. But I understand that Nick, being Nick and being a legend that he is, has done all the work for me. Uh, so, <laughs> i.e. Dave's been out all weekend and hasn't looked. Um, it's just an, awards, <laughs> just an awards thing, mate. There are different stages and the Taste Awards came out. I think there are oh, ones yeah. for design and, all, and other things as well. But the Taste ones came out. That's why everyone was getting excited. I'll read a little bit here. The World Drinks Awards are the global awards selecting the very best in all internationally recognised styles of drinks. Presented by thedrinksreport.com. The world's number one online resource. Blah, 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 blah. Um, blah, 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 Yeah. In on that, you've got the World Drinks Awards. In that is the World Whiskey Awards. And there are a million categories, basically. Right. Um, we've got friends of the show who are judges on the uh, on these awards. Um, really? Yeah, got Billy Abbott and Greg Dillon. They're, no way. Yeah, I didn't know that. They wow. are judges on there. And the taste winners have been announced, as I said. Now, in the single malt category, 
They have prizes for each region and territory, etc. And a few of them caught our eyes. But they, but they do have. Do they have a best overall as well? So obviously, as, as you've said, they've got different regions. So a prize for the best American single malt, best English single malt, best French, like all that kind of stuff. But is there just yeah. a best single malt as well? There is. Yeah, the world's best single malt was also the world's best space side single malt this year, and was the Glen Allocky ten year old. Batch four. That's what Ooh. one. Um, yeah. But there are other categories as well. Um, Caught our eye. Best American single malt went to the Westland Distillery, Gary on a five. Cheers, Matt Hoffman. Yeah. Congrats to Matt Hoffman and everyone there. Um, you can hear us taste that whiskey as well as chat to the master of the distiller, Matt Hoffman, back in episode 35. I can't believe it's 35. Can you believe Amazing. that? Yeah. Oh my God. It feels like yesterday as much as, that's 20 weeks ago. It yeah. does feel like yesterday we did that. Yeah, I know. Best English single malt to our friends at Bimba. Bimba Oloroso cask, batch Con- number one. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Oh, we had yeah. that. Did we, did we try that when we were there, didn't we? We did, yeah. I don't know if it's batch number one. It but probably was. But right. uh, yes, uh, episode 27, everyone, we were back. We actually went to the Bimba Distillery in Park Royal. Um, talked to Matt Mackay there. Last week's distillery, Teeling, won Best Irish Single Malt with a 28-year-old vintage. Mm-mm-mm. Need like to try to that, clearly. Yeah, would like to. Um, best Irish Pot Still, Redbreast 21-year. I'm looking forward to doing a Redbreast on this show. A lot of people are talking about it. I love it. I love it. I bought Danny Gruff a bottle for, his, for Christmas, actually. And I think I drank half of it. Is that one of the ones which is from Jameson's? It's, from the, it's, it's is part it, of the Irish Distillers Group. It's all made at Middleton. Right, okay. Place. I remember you talking about it, but when we did JMO. Yeah, a load of stuff's made in Middleton, including Redbreast and Jameson and right. a bunch of others as well. So, yes, but they're obviously different spirit and age differently, etc. And we'll go into that when we do it one day. So, Absolutely. yes, there's a few there. So, that was the World Whiskey Awards. Interesting stuff. So, congratulations to everyone. Also, and- Nick, I don't know if you saw this. Whiskey Magazine's Icons of Whiskey Awards were recently held as well. I don't know if you that. saw that or what recently announced. I did see that, yeah. One day we're going to be in this, Nick. I guarantee it. I guarantee, <laughs> guarantee it. You heard it here first. We're going to get there one time. We will get there. We, we're after the uh, communicators of whiskey, which this year Mark Gillespie won of Whiskey Cast. So congratulations to him. We love um, that podcast. So uh, if, that you podcast. Ha- if you haven't checked it out, Nick's going to put a link in the show notes uh, to Whiskey Cast. It's really interesting. You'll learn a hell of a lot from that. Uh, so yeah, g- nice one, Mark Gillespie. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, it might be a while uh, <laughs> yeah. on, the, on the basis of today's interview. Whiskey but, icons, uh, <laughs> whiskey icons. Nick and Dave, especially with this hair, Nick. Oh, I mean, if icons. I, this is the most iconic hair I've ever had at the moment. No. Yeah, listeners, check out our social media this week because Dave's hair is an absolute treat. It's nearly at Dr. Emmett Brown levels of craziness. It's got a Keith uh, Flint vibe to it as well. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. Marty, yeah, I'm a <laughs> fire starter. I could do like a mashup of uh, Emmett Brown and and Keith Flint. I oh, look forward to that. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> a few um, others on the uh, uh, who won awards from the whiskey magazine Icons of Whiskey Awards mm-hmm. um, online retailer of the year, the Whiskey Exchange. Well done, oh, our friends, our well friends, of whiskey, friends exchange. Of whiskey Exchange. Yes, and Sustainable Distillery of the Year, sponsored by Scotch Bonnet which is a pepper, as far as I know. Probably something else as well. Should look that up. Nick Neen Distillery. And that's cool, because we have Annabelle Thomas from Nick Neen Distillery on the show in a couple of episodes. Yes, so. found, founder of that distillery. It's a wonderful place they've got up there, from what we hear. But yes. all the details look amazing. And that interview we did with her, we already done, we did it a few weeks back. It was amazing. She's so yeah. great. So yeah. uh, looking forward to you hearing that. Congratulations yeah. to Nick Neen Distillery. Yeah, that is a well-deserved award, that one. And I just saw this one and thought it was funny. Supermarket of the Year, Tesco. <laughs> there you go. Amazing. They have a good range. They have a good range. They're club card with the offers. They're they have deals. a club card. They, make, yeah. uh, they have some good deals, so yes. Have I ever told you my Tesco story, Nick? Boom. Dum, da, 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 dum. <laughs> Um, Have I told you my I Tesco think, story? I, I think I know the Tesco story. It's just to do with your lineage, isn't it? It is to do with my lineage. Right, so do you know why it's called Tesco, for starters? Um, wasn't it the founder's wife's name? It's Next. Tessa. There yes, because he was, uh, he'd was he been made bankrupt a couple of times, so he couldn't open another company. So he called it Tessa Company, which was called Tesco. 
Um, but the rumor in our family is my great granddad Giles, who was a greengrocer during World War Two, lent Mr. Tesco, whose name I don't know, I just know him as Mr. Tesco, <laughs> the money to start this company. Wow, could have been so different. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, and I've got, I've got no evidence. I've got no hard evidence to back this up. But this is the, this is. But the, you want some? If anyone out there knows, <laughs> knows about this. Herbert Giles giving yeah. money to whoever the founder of Mr. Tesco is. Yeah. Uh, Dave Giles needs Whoever Tessa, T- Tessa's husband, uh, we want our money back. The Gileses want our money back. <laughs> Give us our money back and it, yeah. with interest. I was going to say. Did he get, if he didn't get it back, then I think you're entitled to I've, I've, it. Well, I've no, I've no idea. Don't no idea if he got it back. I've got no well evidence of this at all. But anyway. Well worth yeah. looking into. Well worth looking I, into. Pretty, pretty sure and there was one point a few years back where when I was studying economics where Tesco was receiving one in every eight pounds spent in the UK. When did you study economics? Oh, well, I think I'm a man of many, many surprises. But yes, I've studied economics. Um, anyway, anyway, the uh, anyway, whiskey icons, it. the icons of whiskey awards. And we will be there one day. One day. One day. One day. She will be mine. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's our density. <laughs> You're listening to Whiskey and Things. These British people talk funny. And so that's all we're going to give you this week uh, because... What do you mean all? It's packed, jam-packed. Well, yeah, but I, uh, last week you told me off of saying that's all we've got time for. So I'm trying to think oh. of how to say, you know, I'm just, just trying to think of a different way of saying it. That's all we're going to give you this week. Tune in for more next week. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it's not it. bad, is it? It's not bad. It's cool. A bit rough around you, just. Oh, okay, I'll work on it. That's just the theme of today's show. <laughs> 55, too rough much around chocolate. the edges. It's too much chocolate. <laughs> I'm 35 and rough around the edges, so, you know. <sighs> but anyway, it was a great show today. Thanks Thank again, you, Stuart Baxter, Stuart for carrying Baxter. us. Tune in next week as these potential icons of whiskey try and give you more of that wonderful stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Don't even know if that sentence makes any sense at all. But um, I don't know what to do with that. To be honest, that, um, if that makes it in, I'll, I'll be amazed myself. To be honest. Anyway, might, let's get let's get out of here. Anyway, right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Truly, thanks for coming. Please come back. We're so sorry. <laughs> We're if, so sorry. Know, we hope you learned something. At least we hope you learned something. Tons of whiskey. Whiskey and Things has been brought to you by And Things Productions.